This next lecture is on heat and thermal energy. I feel that this concept is important to understand thermodynamics, which we will move into next. However, the formulas that we will use in here are not on the AP exam. But either way, it's important to, uh, to your understanding. So without further ado, let's heat it up in here. Temperature is the average internal kinetic energy for some substance. And what that means is it's the average motion of the molecules inside a substance. Heat is the amount of energy that flows from one object to another. Heat flows because, a, because of a difference, or excuse me, that energy the amount of energy uh, that must be added to or taken away from some substance to change the temperature by some amount depends on the mass of that object or substance and what type of material it is. So certain things will heat up faster or, or increase temperature faster than others. Um, you're familiar with this on a daily basis. Um, so the formula here that we see that you see in front of you, Q equals MC delta T. Q is the amount of heat. This is measured in joules, or it's over energy. Um, it's measured in joules. And M is the mass. C is the specific heat capacity, and it depends on the specific material. Um, so, for example, water has one of the highest specific heats um, for common materials that we have, and it takes a lot of energy to increase or change temperature. And then delta T, once again, is just change in temperature. The specific heat of water is one kilocalorie, kilocalorie or a thousand calories of per kilogram degree Celsius. This means that it takes one calorie of energy to change one gram of water by one degree. Um, the one kilocalorie, when energy is lost due to friction or other uh, non-conservative forces, it often is turned or converted into thermal energy. This is saying that, like, for example, a ball bouncing, it doesn't return to that same height at all times. But as the potential energy drops, the thermal energy increases. This increase in thermal energy creates a, an increase in temperature. The relationship between calories and joules is known as the mechanical equivalent of heat. So how much mechanical energy is converted into thermal energy? When objects are at a higher temperature, they will lose thermal energy to objects at a lower temperature. This transfer of the thermal energy is known as heat, or the, the flow of thermal energy. Um, the amount of heat lost by one object to another object is equal to the amount of heat gained by the other object, assuming that there is no heat loss to external surroundings. So. This is, follows along with the conservation of energy. And objects will lose or gain heat until they could become in thermal equilibrium. This is when they are at the same temperature. So objects that, that are hotter or have a higher temperature will lose thermal energy to objects that are colder, which will gain that thermal energy until they hit the same point, this kind of equal neutral point, which is called thermal equilibrium. As we mentioned, it takes energy to change the temperature of a substance. Additionally, it also takes energy to change the phase of some substance. For example, going from solid to liquid, melting, takes energy to change that substance from the solid to the liquid. Again, it also takes energy to go from a liquid to a gas. In the reverse, condensing from a, liquid, from a gas to a liquid, this releases energy. And the same idea from going from a liquid to a solid, freezing, this releases energy into the surroundings. For example, like you think of a, a steam, you get burned by steam, which is water vapor, water gas, and it condenses into a liquid on your skin. Then, in that case, you get a, a very bad burn, and that's because that thermal energy that's released is, um, causes your skin to become damaged and your cells to damage. This is really bad because... 
uh, water vapor or water in, in general has a latent heat of vaporization to go from a liquid to a gas. It takes a lot of energy to evaporate a, um, a single uh, a kilogram or whatever, however you want to look at it, of uh, liquid water. And so, therefore, that same amount of energy is released when it condenses back the other way. Deposition is the um, is what it's called when it goes from straight from a gas to a solid. And then we also have uh, sublime, or is when a solid evaporates straight into a gas. This usually occurs under uh, very um, cold situations, very low, low thermal energy, or a high pressure. The differences in pressure can, can cause this to happen. So this is just how uh, phase change and thermal energy are related. All right, here are a couple of quick review questions. First, what is thermal equilibrium? Look back on the video or in your textbook if you're having any questions about that. Second, when water condenses on the outside of a glass of ice water, so when the water vapor condenses 